it's Stephanie here with a video for Simon Says Stamp. Today I'm taking part in a video hop for Laura Sturks, who recently hit a milestone on YouTube with 1,000 YouTube subscribers and decided to have a fun little video hop to celebrate her great milestone that she's achieved. So as a part of that video hop, we are taking part and I'm creating this card here today. For this card, I'm using the new Scribble Flower Stamps and Dies that were just released as part of our Pure Sunshine release. And I'm going ahead and starting off with a piece of 40 pound vellum and Versamark ink. And I'm just stamping some of these Scribble Flowers directly onto the vellum with the Versamark ink. I'm gonna stamp a couple of the larger ones and smaller ones as well as the leaves. And go ahead and add some white embossing powder from Hero Arts directly onto these stamped images and go ahead and heat emboss them. The Basil 40 pound vellum is great for heat embossing because it's a thicker vellum so it tends to warp a little bit less and it just is more sturdy so when you're done with your heat embossing it tends to keep its shape a lot better. So now I have everything embossed I went ahead and cut them out off camera with the Scribble Flowers dies that go with the stamp set. They fit perfectly with the stamped images so it's super easy to stamp them and then go ahead and die cut them. And now I want to add some color to these flowers. So I'm using my Derwent watercolor um, pencil crayons. These are a great type of watercoloring pencil crayon because they're more like paint than they are like a pencil crayon. So the color is really, really um, rich and colorful and goes on awesome on vellum. So I just added a little bit of water to this tiny little craft sheet here. I have a few different craft sheets that I've cut into different sizes for depending on what size I need. So I have a couple that are normal large size. And then I have, I bought one sheet that I use to kind of cut up into these smaller pieces. And it makes it super easy when you want to just work on something little and you just need to bring out your sheet for that. So like I said, I've added the water onto the sheet and I'm just taking my paintbrush directly to the pencil crayon. I just am dipping it in the water first and then I just kind of rub it against the pencil and the water lifts that color off for you. I like to do it this way because it gives a little bit more control and it allows you to keep the color really, really rich and dark versus watered out. I like it with just a little bit of water, just enough to get the color moving, but for this technique you want it to be more thick and paint like which is kind of what these pencil crayons do. So as you can see here I'm just kind of pulling that color off of the pencil crayon. If it gets a little bit too dry just add a little bit more water in um, and then kind of just rub it down on the craft mat to see if it's got the darkness that I want. And then I just carefully go around that whole piece and add that color on. And you can once I finish and have the full color wash onto the whole area I like to take the paintbrush and kind of just go around that whole circular thing and move that color just to kind of put some fun lines in it and to give it a little bit of added texture for when it dries. And you can see in the video that the piece that I um, put the color on completely kind of folded up there and is not flat at all. When that dries, it'll as it dries, it'll slowly kind of open up and flatten out. So you can kind of see it's kind of cool to watch in the video as I'm doing the other pieces. If you keep an eye on the top pieces that are kind of drying, you can slowly see them go from that folded look to a completely flat piece again. So that first one that we did, you can see now, is completely dry and took the shape back again, no problem. So I went ahead and did the same thing with the leaves and added some color and then added a great turquoise color to the larger ones and an orange color to the small ones. And now I'm just taking a darker shade of green and putting some additional color on the inside area of the leaves just to give a little bit of shading and dimension for when I put these together into the flowers. So I set everything aside, let it dry completely, and now I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the card base. So I have this gray piece of cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. This is the lightest of the three colors. This one's called Fog. And I'm taking the stem images from the stamp set and stamping them directly onto the gray cardstock piece. I'm just using Versamark once again, and I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss these with the white, mainly because I want them to look like they actually go with the flowers, so I wanna keep the same embossing that I did on the top part of the flowers. So I just added the powder, heat embossed those directly onto the card base, and now I'm gonna go ahead and start adhering the flowers. So I'm sure you know uh, when you work with vellum, the adhesive tends to show through, so you have, usually have to be kind of inventive with where you put your adhesive so you don't have any issues of it showing through. In this case, I actually wanted the adhesive to show through, mainly because this is a dot roller, so it puts the glue on in little tiny dots, 
And as I adhere the pieces on and kind of push down on them, the little dots of adhesive show through each flower piece and you get this cool looking texture that I just thought would look really neat as part of the flowers. So I went into this planning on using the adhesive and having it show through just to give a kind of a fun dimensional look to these flowers with those dots showing through. So you can see I'm just kind of lifting and figuring out where I want to put the pieces. I'm just making this whimsical and fun, I think kind of how these flowers are meant to be, and just kind of positioning everything where I want it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the leaves and kind of position them around the stems to make it kind of fill in the space a little bit, but still kind of realistic, but still whimsical and fun. And as you can see there, I didn't end up using all the leaves that I thought I would. With the space that I ended up having, it looked better to kind of lessen the leaves that I was going to use and just use four of them. So now I have all the flowers, the leaves are all good to go. I decided to die cut the congrats sentiment from the new cake um, and congrats die set. I think that's the name of it. And when I went ahead and positioned that on the card, I realized that it kind of went over top of one of the leaves. And I didn't want the congrats to touch the flowers at all. So I just went ahead and lifted that up. It's not a problem, especially with the dot roller adhesive. It lifted up no problem, so I shifted that down and then went ahead and adhered the congrats into that open area with the, it's just a white cardstock piece that I cut that out of. And then to finish the card and kind of give it a little bit more dimension and detail, I added some gems to the center area of the flower, all the same size. And then I also used my clear Wink of Stella marker and very quickly and carefully went over top of the congrats die cut to add a little bit of sparkle. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and huge, huge congrats to Laura on a great YouTube milestone. Thanks for watching.